What's going on coders and welcome to episode 5 of our document service playlist on the Google Apps Script course. In this video we're going to be talking about text. So the top 5 methods that I have for you today are get text, set text, edit as text, insert text, and delete text. So let's go into the code editor and see what we got going on. A lot of times you'll want to get the text off of your document. So what I have set up so far in the code editor is I am getting our document that we've been working on in the last couple of videos of this playlist, which is again right here. And then I'm storing that in a constant called doc. And then after that, I am getting which section of the document I would like. So again, I'm getting the body. To remind you guys, there are four different sections of the body that you can play around in. That is the header, the body, any of the footnotes, and then the footer. So just for simplicity, I am getting the body because that is probably where you're going to be uh, working in most of the time. And then after that, I'm getting a paragraph from that body. Again, text doesn't have to be within a paragraph. You can have text, say, within uh, some tables or, say, within some lists right here. But uh, most of the time, you'll be working with paragraphs. All right, so I am getting the index number two of all the paragraphs on the body. So uh, just, just to... Uh, confirm which one it is. So this is zero. And then again, this this return key right here, this is one. This is counted as a paragraph. And then this is number two. So I am getting this paragraph right here, which is professor surrounded by two curly brackets. Alrighty. So to get the text from a paragraph, it is extremely simple. You would just say which paragraph you're talking about and then the method is get text. So this returns for us a string. It's not a text element or anything like that. It's just a simple string. So that makes it very easy on us. So let's just log or log that just to confirm that we are indeed getting the uh, text of professor. So if we run it, again, if we, uh, uh, if we look into our logs, it should be this right here, which is professor, which is exactly this right here. So that worked. All right, so now let's say we want to set the text, right? So we got our text, it, we confirmed it, that it does say professor. Now let's say we wanted to set the text. And what this means is, it, is it's going to look at the paragraph and it's going to replace whatever is in that paragraph with a new set of text. So let's say paragraph again. And the method is almost identical, but now it is set text. And this returns nothing, right? It returns void. But um, what it does is it takes a argument, uh, which is a string of text. And what this is going to do is it's going to set whatever text is in this paragraph to this new string of text, right? So I have right here a constant called text and it's uh, Professor Plum. So now I'm going to replace basically whatever is in this paragraph with uh, this new text Professor Plum. So anyways, if I hit save and I hit run, if we go back into our document, you can see that now our placeholder has been replaced and set to Professor Plum. Alrighty, so what we've been doing so far is that we have been configuring the text at a paragraph letter level, right? So um, that's great if you want to manipulate, I guess, the entire paragraph or if you want to modify the entire paragraph. But let's say we just had some text within that paragraph that we needed to modify or edit or something like that. We didn't want to replace the entire paragraph. We just had, say, if we wanted to change this word to okay instead of great, then we would need some other way of doing that. And the way to do that is first to uh, comment that out. <laughs> no, not really, but actually uh, it's paragraph dot edit as text. So this is an extremely popular method um, and basically what this is going to do is it's going to, instead of, instead of having our object paragraph, right, we're now going to have an object of the type text. So this is going to uh, convert our paragraph into text and after that we have a list of new methods that we can use that are entirely made for a text object, right? So it's all underneath the class of text now. All right, so again, there are a lot of methods right here, but we are only going to look at two for now. And those two are insert text and delete text. So let's first look at insert text. 
So if I say insert text, you can see that we have two op or two required parameters that we need to uh, have in this method. One is an offset, which is an integer, and one is the text that we want to insert. So this text is extremely simple. Again, we have this uh, constant right here. It's called Professor Plum, and that is what we're going to insert. And actually, let's move off of this paragraph and let's move on to this paragraph right here. So this is going to be index eight. You can confirm that real quick. Uh, this is paragraph zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then this is going to be our index eight. So let's just change this real quick from two to eight. And then now what this offset means is basically how, how many characters from the start of your paragraph do you want to insert your text? So um, very manually, this is going to take a lot of work, but if you uh, build out uh, some dynamic programming, um, then this will actually be uh, a worthwhile method to use, right? But for right now, we're just gonna do it manually, and it might you might cringe a little bit at how difficult this is, but again, if you build a automatic and uh, dynamic um, program, then it might not be uh, too bad of a method to use. Anyways. Let's insert our text and let's say we wanted to insert it right after this word say. So actually we want to insert it right after the space after the word say. So we need to count up the characters from the beginning of the paragraph that we want to insert it. So um, this indentation is actually a character of the paragraph. So this is zero, right? This T is index one, this O is index two, space is three, four, five, six, seven, right? So we want to now start it at the eighth. Um, we want to have it right here at, at position number eight. So if we just say offset eight, and I'm actually going to add a space after this Professor Plum just so that it makes a little bit more sense. All right, so if I hit the run button now, you can see that our Professor Plum has been added to the eighth index of the character array, if you will, of the text of this paragraph. So that is pretty cool, but this actually doesn't really make any sense. To say Professor Plum, the West had great masterpieces, that doesn't really make sense semantically. So now let's try to delete this text from the paragraph. So if we go back into our code editor, and let's just comment this out real, real quick. If we say paragraph dot edit as text, and then we'll say delete text, you can see that we have two required parameters. One is the start offset which is exactly like uh, this parameter right here. So we've already seen that. And then the other parameter that we have to include is an end offset inclusive. So what this means is that um, where do we want to stop our deleting of all the text, right? So which character position do we want to say, all right, this is the end of the uh, range that we're going to delete. And this is uh, inclusive. So I'll show what that means in a second. So let's say again that we want to start at character position eight, which is right here. So this P is going to be our eighth index. And if we just count up the letters real quick, we'll say nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. And let's just delete this space as well, which will be our 22nd um, uh, character index. So if we say this is going to be 22, and again, this is inclusive, so if we say 22, that is going to include the uh, 22nd character. So now if we say save and we hit run, it should delete the text that we just inserted. And let's check it out just to verify. Yup, it did. So now our Professor Plum has been deleted from the text and our paragraph makes sense semantically again. All right, guys, I know that was quite a bit, but there's still a lot more to explore within this text method or this text class, I mean. Um, but I hope you learned something and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons and I'll see you in the next one.